everyone. So glad to be a part of this Digital Health Connect 2020 conference um, and immensely hopeful that everybody is safe and sound. I think it's very exciting that we've been able to digitize the event and really take it into a new format. Um, today, I'll be speaking a bit around the evolution of digital medicine as myself and the organization that I work for see it. Um, to provide a brief introduction, my name is Alexander Gilbert. I work with a business called Humor. Um, I joined Humor somewhere around three years ago, um, I think as employee number eight. Um, so very, very early on. And essentially since then have predominantly been focused on our business growth in a variety of different ways. So how we partner with life sciences or healthcare or even other organizations to really do the great work that we do today. And at the moment, my focus is predominantly within the field of digital medicine. So usually partnering with the entities that we tend to partner with to really figure out how we can create a new world within the field of healthcare. But before I tell you a bit more about the world as we see it and, and our business in general, I wanted to tell you a bit more around the history of medicine. Um, starting initially with, I think, 5,000 years ago, 2,650 BC to be exact, where Imhotep, the Egyptian physician, was actually the first doctor's visit to have ever happened and the first recorded doctor's visit that we have. Since then, our understanding and our insight in healthcare has evolved and changed and grown very rapidly. You know, whether it was the lab results in 750, 1750 AD or radiology and the advantage of x-rays, which allowed us for the first time ever to get this new and unparalleled insight into how the human body was functioning without having to cut it open. Or even if we look more recently at the advance of genomics and even consumer genomics with businesses like 23andMe and you know the Thousand Genome Project and the, and the 100,000 Genome Project, I should say, in the UK, um, the advance in insight has been really episodic and has grown immensely. And that brings us to today, and I guess the, the next field as we see it. And what we think is the next frontier in healthcare insight is the field of digital biomarkers. And the reason that we say that is for the first time ever, we are now allowing ourselves to receive a huge amount of data beyond the scope of what we thought possible because we are now carrying around these sensors and one that I'm filming on right now, these sensors called mobile phones which are continually collecting huge amounts of data on our daily lives. And because of that access to data for the first time ever, we not only can truly make a lot of these insights personal, but we can actually make them continuous. So where each previous insight, whether it was a lab test or a X-ray or even you know taking your genome was kind of episodic and of a certain period, digital biomarkers enable us to look at a continuous and proactive and predictive view of healthcare. So for the first time ever, you were able to get an immediate insight into your health, whilst also actually being able to analyze those insights to look at where your health may go in the future. There is a new category in medicine, which is based on all the data that your body generates. And the whole idea and our focus is to see, can we find signatures that quantify your health, quantify different diseases you might be dealing with. These invisible footprints are called digital biomarkers, and you're leaving them wherever you go, through watches, wearable technology, and smartphones. There are already thousands of diagnostic and monitoring applications targeting a host of different conditions and diseases. Healthcare is all about the data. This digital biomarker category, probably it will have the biggest impact in medicine. And truly, if I look at the potential of data and digital, um, some of the figures that I came across when we were doing our initial research that are very exciting is that actually 90% of all of the data that we have as a society was created in the last two years only. And 2.5 quintillion bytes of that data are created per day globally. Now, as you can imagine, a portion of that is data that is related to our general health, You know, whether it is the activity and the steps that you're collecting on your phone, whether it's, you know, a adherence or something like that, that you're logging in a journal or, you know, it could even be answering an online questionnaire about how you're feeling today. There's a huge amount of different data being collected on an ongoing basis and on an individual basis around how your health is progressing. And if we harness that data, the opportunities are pretty large. Um, the way that we see it for life sciences organizations or for organizations in general 
is that if you have a strong digital and data foundation, so if you have a really good understanding of digital processes, good safety, good data safety in, pra in place, good data management standards, and really a collaborative interface, you have a very strong digital foundation to really maximize on the opportunities that data and digital provide. And if I think around the healthcare continuum, those opportunities are vast, you know, whether we're talking about a hospital that can remotely care for their patients, whether I'm thinking about a life sciences business who can look at new business models um, for innovation, um, R&D acceleration, you know, bringing drugs to market much sooner, smart operations, new commercial models, or even if I look at a population health perspective and an insurer perspective, you know, we're talking about being able to fully quantify what the needs and the health needs are of a population immediately using something as simple as a smartphone. Those opportunities are truly vast from a commercial perspective if you have that strong digital and data foundation set up. Beyond that, but beyond the immediate commercial opportunities, there is also a lot of opportunity on an individual basis. If we think about rare and chronic and really most patients nowadays, you know, 99% of their time is spent outside of the hospital, which is ironic seeing as, you know, that's where we're not collecting any data on them. So 99% of the time a physician or an HCP in general has no insight into how a patient is doing. And so you're getting zero bytes of those 2.5 quintillion being collected. And realistically, if you were able to have insight into, you know, that 99% of the time, you would be able to see a lot of progress. You know, you'd be able to see better adherence plans. Um, you'd be able to collect patient reported outcomes better, look at activity, adjust activity, adjust weight loss goals. You know, the opportunity to really deliver on personalized, proactive, predictive care is huge. And to provide a bit of insight, that's very much why we started the business and what we do. And to give you some insight, the core of our offering is our software, um, which was created in collaboration with various entities such as Apple and Tencent and others um, to essentially try and harness some of the potential of data and digital. And what it is essentially is a patient facing app and a web based dashboard where the data comes in from the app. Now, the interesting thing about the app itself is that it is essentially infinitely um, flexible to the needs of the end user. So the backbone of it are these things called modules, which you can see on the left-hand side. Um, think of those modules as maybe simplified versions of other digital health apps. So it could be a medication tracker, it could be a questionnaire, it could be an exercise of some kind. Um, we've even now started to integrate external apps into ours to form modules. Um, a good example being Happy Tech, who you can see here, who have provided us with a um, heart rate detection sensor that is coming in from the smartphone camera of a phone. And each time we work with a new client or a new partner, we combine those modules in different ways to create different versions of the solution. So think of it as having a really big uh, a really big bag of Lego blocks. Um, and each time we work with a new client, we combine those Lego blocks in different ways to create different versions of the solution or really make houses for them per se. Um, beyond the Lego blocks themselves and the modules, we've also integrated an array of different wearable devices. You know, in the thought process there was, why have 15 different wearables um, and 15 different apps for those wearables when you could have one centralized app with all of that wearable data coming in and being combined with the activity data. So for once you have this kind of streamlined holistic source of truth to really be able to track the patient and provide them with insight on how they're doing. And then finally, we realized that, you know, if we truly wanted to help a play a role in helping a patient manage their health holistically, we had to play a role in educating them. And so each version of the platform has an inbuilt learn section, which we populate in with content and engaging content that provides more information to the patient on how to care for themselves. So, you know, this could be content that we're, we're procuring um, alongside the NHS for some of the programs we're running with them. It could be content that's given to us from an external provider, but really it's kind of giving that feedback based on the data that you're collecting. So, you know, if we're looking at a, for example, a patient that is currently undergoing surgery for their knee, um, we're able to push content to them pre and post operatively that encourages them with those weight loss goals, encourages them with those exercises, and really kind of helps manage a holistic solution. And now the reasoning that I wanted to touch on our platform as well as the way that we built it is, I think that 
it's essential to really look at it as a core piece of how we can harness data and digital. You know, the amount of interfaces and the amount of different opportunities that we have are truly immense. And by having a platform that is flexible, but also holistic, we really try and target our solutions towards not just a disease state or a project or something along those lines, but really to the individual. With the aim being that in a couple of years, if not months, as things are accelerating now, um, we'd really get to a point where we are able to target that person as an individual and provide them with a solution that helps them enable personalized care for themselves digitally. So it could be a patient that is undergoing knee surgery, but also, for example, has an issue with type 1 diabetes and helping contextualize and collect data around them to really create a personalized experience. Now, the reason that that data collection software for us is so essential is that it forms a core part of how we build towards those digital biomarkers in the future. And here I'd like to outline what our approach in general is to collecting data as well as creating these digital biomarkers. So the way that we work as an organization is the software that we utilize. We usually alongside our partners, if we're creating a digital biomarker, deploy into the um, field to essentially collect data whilst simultaneously helping the patient manage their care. So what's happening is the patient is using their app under consent, um, they're managing their care, the physician is kind of utilizing that information to better care for them. But as we start to collect data at scale and through a variety of different patients and patient cohorts, we begin to start to recognize insights and signatures. And we view those signatures of deterioration or you know disease existing and really you know um, disease in general as digital biomarkers. So digital biomarkers are the data signatures of different diseases as we see them. And once we have large enough data sets, um, which we're starting to see in various projects, we can start to create algorithms in that biomarker development phase, which allow us to automatically view those signatures. So for example, if you are a patient who has Parkinson's disease, and we've identified a, bio, a digital biomarker that relates Parkinson's to gait, we would be able to automatically give you insights on how your Parkinson's is progressing based on your gait data. And the opportunities here are huge. You know, you, it can really be applied to almost any disease that you can think of. Um, just gait in and of itself has so much research around any neurological condition, as well as many physiological ones as well. You need to record at least 10 uh, finger movements and combine with those data, it will give you this score. This app is designed to monitor a patient's Parkinson's disease just by using the camera on a smartphone. This is a test that traditionally you're doing it in the healthcare settings in front of a neurologist. And then finally, what we do is that we partner with various businesses to both develop those biomarkers and develop those algorithms, but also to validate them. Um, I think that digital health is now entering an age where validation and data and you know security is really of the essence if we're going to see these technologies launch and scale. And that clinical validation piece is very similar to what you would do for a drug. So we would start with a, an expansion study, so you know an initial cohort. Um, we consider the remote monitoring and the data collection in the many times our feasibility study. So we start with expansion study and then expand to a pivotal study. So a much larger randomized control trial, essentially, which um, allows us to really view both the health as well as the, the health, the health as well as the economic impact of these digital biomarker solutions with the ultimate aim being that similar to a drug or a diagnostic, we are able to essentially stream out these solutions as reimbursable products. And what we're hoping is that by undergoing this method, which is very, very similar to the way in which you would currently do it in the market, we can actually do something um, that is much more easily acceptable to the general health industry. And we actually see that that approach has been quite accepted by the health industry. You know, we very much initially started with healthcare systems who are still to date our largest clients, I would say. And within that healthcare system space, we're predominantly working as a remote patient monitoring provider, as well as a research partner. Um, our largest client there being the NHS, who are now even utilizing some of our technologies to help with the current pandemic, I believe. 
Um, beyond that, and once we had started to scale within the healthcare systems, we started to partner with life sciences businesses. Um, and initially very much starting with patient support programs, so very similar to um, the remote patient monitoring. But as things evolved, we started to get more recognized as a real world data capture platform. We started to get involved in clinical trials. And now we actually see those life sciences partners as the ideal research partners when we're looking at this digital biomarker space. You know, the, the opportunity there is that these life sciences businesses are really built for these large scale R&D programs. And that is something that they fully understand and can get behind. So it's been really amazing to partner with businesses such as Janssen with a case study I'll tell you about in a minute, which essentially shows um, you know, how we can partner together to create these digital biomarkers that are beneficial to all. And finally, those digital biomarkers are powering our final vertical, which is the population health vertical. And this is our newest, but also probably one of the more exciting verticals that we work on in the sense that it is completely novel to the industry. For the first time, what we're doing is we're actually looking at partnering with insurers or governments even to, at a large and a population scale, implement these digital biomarkers to test a large portion of the, um, of the populace for a variety of different conditions. So whether it is, for example, you know, looking at depression scoring or, you know, one of the things that we're looking at as a potential now is can you screen an entire nation for Alzheimer's using just a smartphone app? And finally, that leads me to a case study on the work that we're doing, which is really alongside Janssen. And within this specific case, what we are specifically looking at is essentially a digital biomarker for Alzheimer's disease and being able to test for Alzheimer's disease at scale. And this is a very exciting tool. And what we're doing is we are in partnership with Janssen and J&J, &J, developing a tool that allows you through word recall, so essentially memorizing words, but also a voice analysis. So when a person is speaking those words back, we're actually analyzing their voice as well. We can identify certain groups of Alzheimer's or dementia patients. And that allows us to essentially, within the context of a smartphone app, come as close to an Alzheimer's diagnosis as you can get without a much more um, invasive test. And we see the solution current, which is currently in development, kind of undergoing a clinical trial. It has already been validated as part of the Janssen R&D for utilization within English. We are going to be revalidating it as well as including a version in Chinese, which, will be, which we will also be validating in Chinese. And the view is that ultimately we can look at scaling it into a real world population soon. But ultimately the goal for us in really both that data and digital is looking at how we can harness them both to improve individual outcomes. If I view the view, if I view the world of digital medicine, that is, you know, the field of digital biomarkers and therapeutics as a whole, um, the impact of those is ultimately on the patient. And if we can allow them to, within their hands, hold methods for quantifying their illness objectively, what we can do is actually provide them for the first time with their own insight into their own health and really shift that kind of responsibility towards the patient and that understanding of an individual health towards the patient. And we believe that by analyzing those unique signatures that are in our individual data, those digital biomarkers, we can actually achieve our vision as a business, which is to create a world where each person lives their life to the fullest. I hope that by partnering with various different organizations in this field, as well as any of you speaking, we can truly work together towards that vision. Thank you so much for, uh, for listening to the slideshow and thank you so much for attending the teleconference. Um, I hope that you and your family stay safe in this current pandemic and that we can find a place to connect soon in person. Thank you very much.